Hey, and welcome to another episode of Motors and Meats. In today's episode, I go to Dallas, Texas with my son Sawyer, and we go to see Metallica in concert at the AT&T Stadium. Awesome show. Two nights, actually. It was a Friday and a Sunday night. Around 100,000 people in attendance. And since there was no show set for Saturday, that means that we got to hang out with my friend Brian, who has a 2015 Dodge Viper. Brian came and met us at our hotel, and then he took us for a blast down the interstates and through some of the awesome back roads in the area surrounding Dallas. Brian's car is a 2015 model Viper V10, 8.4 liters huge engine with 640 horsepower with 630 foot-pounds of torque. Anytime we were side by side, this happened. The heat in August in Dallas is all but unbearable. We saw temperatures in excess of 110, 111 degrees, and the heat index on top of that is up near 130. So our engines are running hot. We're dehydrated from driving around and eventually we had to have something to eat. When I saw how much carbon fiber was on this thing, I thought of my friends Chris and James who are absolutely obsessed with carbon fiber. In fact, Chris's Instagram is Carbon Fiber Chris. Go check him out. Pair all of that lightness with that much horsepower and that much torque, and this thing is an absolute rocket ship. So what are a few ways that the Viper compares to the old 996 here? Well, in a straight line, there's no contest. The Viper straight up walks away from the 996. I think the only 911 that could possibly contend with it would be a 911 Turbo, maybe a Turbo S. And the wheels and tires on this thing are so incredibly wide. The rears are a 335 30 20. That's like 14 inches wide. The fronts are the same size as the rears on my 911 at 285 30 90. And the all important 0 to 60 time in this car in the hands of the best motoring journalists that Car and Driver and Road and Track could come up with at the time when it launched, it posted a time of 4.8 seconds, zero to 60 in a manual. The best time I can get out of it is six seconds. That's probably because I'm not interested in wrecking my clutch, but the Viper, the Viper does it in three seconds flat. So there you go, you have to get into a 911 Turbo a very new generation of it as well to be able to compete with that 0 to 60 time. But here's a good win for the 996. Fuel economy. I know fuel economy is not something you look for in a sports car, but we both have about the same size fuel tank and Brian was out of gas in the Viper whenever I still had more than a third of a tank to go. I could have easily gone another 100 miles and he was on the E mark. The stats for that show 12 miles to the gallon 
and that's probably not whenever you are busting it the way we were doing. Both of the cars have a six-speed manual. Both of the cars are rear-wheel drive. And honestly, there's not a lot of weight difference between these two cars. This car weighs in from the factory dry at 2960, 2,960 pounds, whereas the Viper comes in at 3,351 pounds. Now take that and consider that you have more than double the horsepower where this one is at 300 and the Viper is at about 640. And only add 350 pounds to it. <laughs> Score another one for the trusty 996. This car has back seats. The Viper does not. And here's another important figure for you. The trusty 996 has a top speed of 174 miles per hour. Very respectable. But the Viper has a 206 mile an hour top speed. 206. Anything that starts with a two and has three digits is incredible. One bit of information that I would really like to know and wasn't able to find while doing any research was comparable lap time. I know no one in their right mind is trying to compare a 1999 Porsche 911 to a 2015 Dodge Viper, but I would love to know how this car compares against that car in capable hands around a track. After blasting around for a while, Brian took us to where he knew we'd be able to spot some really cool cars. drive out we saw even more amazing cars. Hey thanks for watching another episode with me. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I appreciate you guys watching. And let me know in the comments what other cars you'd like to see in comparison to the old 996. 